What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Bitcoin and Markets. My name is Ansel Lindner, and on this show, we talk about Bitcoin and macro and all that stuff. This is the longest running macro podcast in Bitcoin. And hey, we have fun live streaming here. I'm live streaming to YouTube, Telegram, Twitter, and Twitch. So there's lots of T's there. Uh, Telegram, Twitter, and Twitch now all live going out. Bitcoinandmarkets.com is where you guys want to go to stay up on all of my content. You can sign up to be a free, get free email notifications every time I put content out. This morning, I did put out two posts. One was the Market Pro newsletter. We looked at Bitcoin, a quick look at Bitcoin, stocks. Is Bitcoin decoupling from stocks and what should we expect on that in the future? We looked at commodities. I ran down all the commodities that I could think of, like major commodities, including agricultural commodities and all that stuff. And said, hey, what can we learn from looking at all these commodities? What's the, the story that they're telling us? Uh, then finally looked at currencies, mainly focusing on the dollar because nothing is all that exciting right now in the currencies, on the currency side, which should tell us something during a banking crisis, by the way. So that's a little heads up on that one. Also, I did I do post the FedWatch post on BitcoinandMarkets.com with all the associated slides. So if you guys do watch FedWatch, which I recommend watching that on Thursdays at 1230 Eastern time, I go live there with Bitcoin Magazine on their Rumble, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, everywhere that they go out. So I, I have a bunch of slides. Like yesterday, I probably had over 20 slides. And then what I do is I take those charts and whatever and put them in a post on my website to make sure that they get published in a timely manner. And then usually the day after the live stream, it comes out in the podcast version in all the podcast apps as part of Bitcoin Magazine's feed. We used to have our own feed for FedWatch, but then Bitcoin Magazine consolidated all of their podcasts uh, they got, they kind of slimmed and streamlined down their podcast offerings and put them all onto one feed. So that's where you can find the FedWatch podcast version is on the Bitcoin magazine feed. But anyway, and then I put out my own podcast version of these live streams that you'll get notified of as well. Try to slim it down. Sometimes I cut out half of half of the pod or, you know, half of the live stream. Uh, and that makes it, you know, consolidates it and makes it easier, faster listening for people. But uh, try to find a Bitcoin and markets in any of your podcast apps and make sure you're subscribed and give me a listen every once in a while. Even if you do listen to these live streams, uh, that helps the show just listening to those. Um, did I say what we're going to talk about today? <laughs> Jeez, I don't even know if I did. So we're going to take a look at the Skull of Satoshi that has been making its rounds. I guess Greenpeace or something put out a hit piece on Bitcoin or a hit video on Bitcoin. So we're going to take a look at that, watch it. I haven't watched it yet, so this will be my initial reaction to watching this. But some people like this skull of Satoshi and they're starting to run with it and adopt it. Bitcoin has this type of behavior in its past when the meme of, or I guess it was, it was meant to be a derogatory term of Bitcoin maximalism was coined by Vitalik Buterin. Bitcoiners adopted that reappropriated the term Bitcoin maximalist as a term of endearment instead of a pejorative. So, uh, and, and it meant to Bitcoiners that, you know, you're a Bitcoin maximalist once you understand the arguments. If you have been here long enough, you've lived, lived through a cycle, you learned the technology, the social aspects about money, uh, all these things, you come to the conclusion, almost inevitably, everybody comes to the conclusion unless you have an ulterior motive, like you're a scammer, <laughs> you, you come to the conclusion that Bitcoin is the real thing here uh, in this space and is the only thing in this space. And that's why Bitcoin maximalists adopted the term from Vitalik that was initially supposed to poison the well against Bitcoin, La be able to label us toxic, be able to group us into an identity and be able to attack that identity, but Bitcoiners successfully flipped the script on that. It wasn't until a couple of years later, they started using the term maxi because I don't think any like 
Chad Bitcoiner would call themselves a maxi by choice. So that was a term that was so kind of disturbing, uncomfortable that people wouldn't reappropriate that one. And that was pretty successful actually to rename that maxi. Anyways, now this skull of Satoshi has come out and Bitcoiners are instantly trying to reappropriate it to being a positive, which I think is hilarious. We're going to watch that video. Then also we're going to talk about an emergency meeting by Janet Yellen and some Deutsche Bank problems that the contagion continues to spread. So all sorts of good stuff coming up today. Let's take a quick gander at the charts. Hey, what's up guys? Breaking in on the edit. I, I ended up cutting out that second half of those topics. This is going to be just about the Skull of Satoshi and Greenpeace. A few charts up front and that's about it. So if you guys want a full unedited version, you can still find that you know, the live streams stay up on YouTube forever at BTC Market Update and on Twitter at Ansel Lindner. You can find it there as well. Uh, but join me for the live streams if you want the unedited version every weekday almost. Uh, I do these live streams. So anyway, let's get into a few charts and then the skull of Satoshi. If you follow my content, if you're on the Telegram, you're very familiar with this chart. We're running up against this resistance zone of between 28 and 30,000. The next zone after this though, if we do successfully hold 25,000 and then break up through 30,000, the next kind of target area that I have is 48 to 50. So that is a big hefty jump. And if you're on my market pro, you've seen the charts, you've seen my rationale for this. And uh, yeah, so that's what I'm still thinking on price. If we consolidate down to 25,000, it's still not a big deal. Uh, but if we do break 25,000, I think that's when we have to start reevaluating what we're seeing in the charts. Okay, let's take a quick look at stocks too. Green on the day, which is interesting. And also if you go to the weekly chart, we're green the last two weeks. What happened last week? Last week was the huge banking crisis, you know, signature credit suites, all of these things. And what happened? The stock market bounced and was pretty nicely green. Let's see, what did we have last week? It was up almost one and a half percent last week. This week, it is up almost 1%. And that is with all this contagion going on. So I think that's very interesting. You would expect, again, from the headlines, uh, you would expect this to be crashing. And it's not a secret what's going on. It's not like it takes a long time for the market to price in these things, okay? Because just look at what happened to Deutsche Bank stock this morning. It crashed instantly. The market is pricing in these things very, very quickly. And so if the overall U.S. stock market is higher, that tells you something. Let's take a look at the dollar. And we are seeing a slight bounce here. Dollar is still strong, even though people see this chart. Like if I just, uh, if you just look at this chart going back about a year, man, the dollar looks weak. But if you zoom way out and you get 2021 through today, the dollar looks very strong and it's whole, it's bouncing on some important levels. Like it's bouncing on the COVID high. It's still above 100. And like I said, it's bouncing today. So, but at the same time, in a banking crisis, a solvency crisis, you would expect the dollar to rally much harder than it is right now. So the dollar is not, even though it is holding at higher levels, it is not showing an imminent solvency crisis. And we talked about this on FedWatch, right? What we're seeing right now is a liquidity depository crisis, not a solvency crisis. Okay, that's all for the charts. Okay, let's go to this tab and rewind this. This is from uh, Greenpeace Commission and Artwork to encourage Bitcoin to leave proof of work. Oh boy, this. <laughs> oh my God, that is, it's just crazy people. How they don't understand and they're just providing, you know, ammunition for Bitcoiners here. It's beautiful. It really is beautiful. It's hard to attack nature. Like, um, you know, I'm going to put out this great video on 
why the earth should reverse gravity. It just lends itself to parody and it lends itself to being turned around on the people that are making the argument. So uh, that's how I view this, these type of attacks on Bitcoin. But it also reminds me of the presidential economic report that they just came out with that attacked Bitcoin. And in there it said, oh, Ethereum has switched to proof of stake. So, something implying that the Bitcoin company hasn't said that they're switching to proof of stake. And that, that's how these people think. So anyway, let's uh, listen to this. All right, let's play. Think Bitcoin's not bad for the environment? Think again. Introducing my newest collaboration with Greenpeace. I'm Benjamin Von Wong, and I use art to raise awareness for issues like plastic pollution and climate change. Six months ago, I was studying the impacts of climate change in Greenland, where I saw firsthand what the climate crisis looks like. Greenland's ice sheet is melting fast, and witnessing it with my own eyes was absolutely gut-wrenching. I mean, of course, if we would have listened to Al Gore, there shouldn't be any Greenland ice sheet anymore. And I've seen things in the intervening years here where Greenland's ice sheet is at a very large extent. Like it's, it's growing. It has grown over the last decade or something like that. So no, th these are all of these climate arguments have been debunked so many times. That's where I met Rolf from Greenpeace and learned about how fixing Bitcoin could help solve climate change. Here's Rolf. Greenpeace is campaigning to change Bitcoin's code so it stops fueling the climate crisis and harming communities. Bitcoin's the world's most popular digital currency. Okay, what did he say there? Ralph. Greenpeace is campaigning to change Bitcoin's code so it stops fueling the climate crisis and harming communities. Okay, fueling the cr climate crisis and harming communities. <laughs> I mean, this is just absurd. Do people, I know there's people that take this serious, but I, I just don't understand those people. Okay, let's continue. Bitcoin's the world's most popular digital currency, and right now it's using as much electricity as entire countries, and most of that's coming from polluting fossil fuels like coal and gas. Most are coming from polluting fossil fuels like coal and gas. That is wrong. The Bitcoin Mining Council, which love them or hate them, uh, they have put out research on this that it's over 50%. I think it's like 60% renewables. Guys can correct me if I'm wrong on this. But it's over half are renewables. Also, like in the, the case of the New York State moratorium on mining, when they said it had to be, was it 80%? I think it had to be like 80% renewable uh, in order to get a mining license in the state of New York or be able to continue mining where they were only 60%. <laughs> and that was the most or the only industry that was that high on using renewable energy you know like all other industries used like five percent renewables where bitcoin mining in new york state used 60 but that wasn't good enough they had to have 80 percent don't they see what they're doing is they're actually harming renewables bitcoin is going to push forward renewables because Man, if you can find a way to mine Bitcoin cheaply, Bitcoiners will take it. You know, Bitcoiners are the marginal consumer. All they're doing by this is harming renewables. And that's why I say I don't get these people because they're just so dumb. They're so dumb. They don't understand this. Okay, can, let's continue. Bitcoin's climate damage got 125 times worse in just five years. But with the code change, we could cut the electricity needed to run Bitcoin by more than 99%. Okay, it got 125 times worse in the last decade because it's grown so much, uh, uses so much more energy. That should be a plus. You know, like what would, what would you say if um, you said the incentives for renewable energy grew 125 times in the last decade because of Bitcoin. See, this depends on how you frame it, right? Like, it's a wonderful thing. Bitcoin mining using energy is a wonderful thing. It aligns incentives. Going to proof of stake, I mean, obviously it's impossible. It will never happen. So anyway, let's see what they got to say. 
But how to make sure that people paid attention? Enter the Skull of Satoshi, a symbol I built connecting Bitcoin and environmental destruction. This 11-foot skull made from hundreds of pieces of electronic waste, like the kind generated from Bitcoin mining, is months in the making. And hopefully, you get to see it in person soon. Changing Bitcoin's code is gonna take teamwork. We need everyone involved from companies and government officials to crypto enthusiasts and climate activists. So like I would love to see this down in Miami. <laughs> Man, I hope they bring it to Miami. Last year we had the the Bitcoin bull, right? And this year would be awesome to have the skull of Satoshi down in Miami. Share this video and follow Greenpeace USA to join the movement to change Bitcoin's code. Oh God, so silly, so silly. Okay, also Ryan Breen, he posted this one from Gladstein. He pointed out that those are nuclear evaporating towers on the top there. I think they're evaporating towers, right? And how awesome this looks. This looks awesome. It's like it's eating waste. It's like it's eating this modern soup, this modern waste, and turning it into energy, turning it into Bitcoin, stored energy. I mean, it's pretty freaking cool, I think. Let's see what people are saying down here. Let's see. Anybody saying anything good? Someone needs to orange pill him. I'm sure that David Bailey is already all over this. Oh, maybe they're bringing it down to Miami. Maybe they are. Oh, that'd be awesome. Hail the bit skull. Looks like the kind of thing you only get by putting a lot of work into it. It is pretty epic. I'm going to commission a volcano version one. Oh, that would be cool. Like the El Salvador Bitcoin bonds, volcano bonds, whatever they're called. That would be really neat too. This is the type of stuff that can really catch on. And it's not NFTs, right? NFTs are a joke. All those people with those NFTs in their avatars, those things are like horrible art. They're not really even cool art. This here, on the other hand, it's real life and it is going to inspire people. I think it's great. I think it's great. And this is what Bitcoin brings us. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for today. Thanks for joining me. My name is Ansel Lindner. Check out BitcoinAndMarkets.com. Hope you guys have a good weekend. Enjoy your weekend. Get out there uh, with, you know, spend time with friends and family. Get out in nature, in the sunshine. Have some exercise outside. Play with your kids in the backyard or something. But anyway, thanks, guys, for joining me. And I'll check you on the next one. Bye.